Welcome to Hometown Cable on Channel 21 again. My name is Bob Van, and behind the camera, Calvin. And next to me is Nancy Marjoram, the librarian. But the endeavor of uh, Hometown Cable to give you an idea of all the things that are going on in our area. Uh, today we've decided to make a visit with Nancy here at the Champlain Memorial Library on Elm Street in Plattsburgh. Just a little bit to the west of... Plattsburgh, I can't say. No. Okay, Champlain. <laughs> Let me just continue. I'm keep going okay, all right. Uh, Calvin's keeping going, so we'll make that in Champlain, New York. The more people come in, I got so excited. This is not my first time on TV, <laughs> but I know it is Nancy's. Anyway, we're just next to the elementary school on Elm Street in Champlain, New York. One two nine one nine, and Nancy, you're the new librarian. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. I've been here three years and I took over for Ruth Smith, who was librarian for 18 years and uh, she did a fine job and three years ago I took over. And she I, retired? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, to run to, her... To her antique shop. <laughs> right. Okay. And I have a husband, Ralph, who works at Wyeth Erst, and I have a daughter, Sarah, nine, and a son, Ben, 12, and who go to Shazy School because I live in the Shazy School District but in the Champlain Town District. Mailing is Shazy. Shazy. Phone you're, is Shazy. You're on the McBride Road, or mm -hmm. extension of McBride Road, out past the Castine uh, uh, Reservation out there, <laughs> the Calvin and the other Castine, out past the Ridgeview, the extension of Ridge, right. right? And what is your background? Are you from this area? No, I'm from Buffalo. We've been here 18 years. We've been involved in, I've been involved in the PTO at Shazy, and my husband's been uh, a coach for the summer youth baseball. You mentioned 18 years. You you came t to our area when Ruth decided to be a librarian 18 <laughs> years ago. Huh? No significance there, I think. No, no. I just was. I uh, graduated from Potsdam. My husband graduated from Clarkson, and we moved here to uh, Rouse's Point originally. And uh, he had a job at um, Erst, and I taught in Vermont for two years. And then I decided teaching wasn't my forte, so I quit and went with customs for a couple years and then retired to become a full-time mom. Yeah, well, you got you became a mom before you <laughs> retired. Uh, I worked with Nancy up at the office, and we missed your smile up there, Nancy. You were a very pleasant person uh, to be working with up there. You worked at, in the cashier's office, right. I remember. She liked to handle money. Always do. Still does. <laughs> she, she loves those five-cent late fees here at the <laughs> library. But, uh, okay, do you have any library experience before you took over here no, three years ago? I, well, I just helped Mrs. Smith uh, do the typing and, and put away the books for her. And Mrs. Smith did the ordering, and I just came in and helped her put the books away and whatever mm -hmm. else she needed. So I had some idea of what was going on. You're an avid reader? Oh, love to read, but with my job now, I can't no. <laughs> do as much. <laughs> right. Now, you mentioned you were helping her out as an assistant. Do you have any assistant yourself? No, You're I don't. I don't have an assistant. Do I you have need anybody? If people would like to volunteer, it would be great. What I would they do? Um, they could type on the computer. We do have a new, brand new Apple IIe computer, and uh, we do our, all our catalog cards on them. And um, while I'm ordering books, they could be uh, processing the new books that we get. No, I think we're okay. We're back. We had a little break here. Some people coming in the library. Maybe Calvin can pay. We got two people at the the uh, card, catalog. card catalog section. There's a gentleman over here next to the door, smiling. So <laughs> uh, he's glad to be here. And then uh, we have the, uh, the daughter here, Sarah, Sarah Marjoram, and we have some more people over there in the children's section getting some books and talking about people in the library. It's nice to see people here, Nancy. Oh, Do you yes. have enough people coming to the library? I'd like more. There's never enough. You, right. know, you can always use more. We've we've done a whole bunch of new additions since Mrs. Smith's retired. We, I, when I came, I weeded the whole library, which is getting rid of books that haven't gone out for five years. And then I found the areas that we were weak in. And so over the, the three years, I've been purchasing new books to fill those areas. We also had a, a grant of money given from um, Martin Hutchinson and he gave us um, some money and we've purchased books for the juvenile um, all sections of the juvenile section and we're reinforcing our adult nonfiction and adult reference sections with the money that he's given us. You'll notice the inexperienced said children's section, it's the juvenile <laughs> section <laughs> and her daughter is the juvenile, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> not, the, not a delinquent no, juvenile, no, right? No, juvenile. no, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, now you mentioned several things I want to cover. You said you got rid of some books that hadn't been used for five years. How do you get rid of books? 
Well, if you're a library. If we're a library, you have to pull the books off the shelf and take the cards out of the card catalog, make sure, making sure you have all the cards out. Then you stamp discard it in the book, and then I had um, a book giveaway for a while, and when that, uh, I didn't get rid of all the books, I sent them to other libraries who may need uh, books, who books, those books may go out in other libraries and not just here, so uh, they may have a book that has gone out quite a bit that I was throwing away that could replace their worn copy, so we do exchange books that way. Okay, now when you say a book giveaway, how do you give away the book? You put them here and you take one, or you give them I, to the other schools? Well, I put a sign up and on the door that there was a book giveaway, and I set it up in my office, and mm -hmm. I had table upon table of books, and put boxes, and anybody who wanted to take a book. Okay, at box. one time they were selling them for a dime or a quarter a piece, mm -hmm. you, you, you haven't done that? Uh, the last year I did, and then when uh, I couldn't get rid of all of them, then I did try and get rid of them because I hate to throw away a book. Okay, so what you're saying, it's more important to get it to someone who wants it right. rather than to uh, get money the little money. Uh, do you also find that if you charge the quarter, someone wouldn't just take something he doesn't want and just let it lie around? That's true. They, they purchase the mm -hmm. ones that they really want. But mm -hmm. uh, What about someone like in town here, the, uh, the St. Mary's? Would, uh, do you offer them any books at all? St. Mary's, uh, last year I had two classes from St. Mary's walk down on different days and they came to the library and, and um, would have a regular library time period. Um, I do have a couple of the teachers that have library cards here and they come down and take books out for no, them. I was thinking if any of your books were given to the St. Mary's library, for instance. That I didn't think of. They, no, they could use that. some books, I'm sure. Uh, the elementary school, I'm sure they come over here uh, Oh, yes, a lot, right? they always come over. <laughs> they come over. Do they have any regular uh, time over here that they come as a regular? No, well, in the mornings, every morning, every weekday morning, they do have uh, the Champlain School does send over students to work in the library uh, that are uh, reading. It's a reading class over here. So they do come over every morning from about 8 to 9.30. That's some of those mornings you're not here. Right. Right? And okay. they have two teachers that watch them. And, okay. And Let's them. go back to that. What is the history of this particular building in the village of Champlain? This was, building was built in 1970 with a donation from Florence Atwood in memory of her two sons and her husband. Uh, the land was purchased from Northeast Clinton School System for a dollar, and they needed a little more money, so they had fundraising. And they brought it, the, the library, built the library, and moved all the books from above that's the building being uh, renovated down Yes, the, the old bank building down right. below, yes. They moved them down there and these big carry things and, and they stacked all the shelves. And like, as I remember the library in Champlain, they did have them up on the second right. floor or third floor second. of that bank building. Then they moved over to the brick building on Butternet where it was over at the Harrison home right, for, for some years mm -hmm. there. Mrs. Harrison was a library, librarian. I know my children went there to get books mm -hmm. back uh, years ago. That whole street, as a matter of fact, are all new people there. There's Doug Agor, mm -hmm. and then there's, uh, is it Roger, uh, Ralph Forte, and then uh, McManus. Uh, that whole side of that street is all new people in those nice houses. Okay, now Nancy, uh, you mentioned it was a donation. How do you get money to operate this library? You need a salary, you have heat, lights, and so forth? Well, the, the school system pays a fee for the use of the library in the mornings, and so we get some money from the school system. Plus they have a vote of, I think we receive $500 by vote. And we do receive money from the town in the village of Champlain. And that doesn't cover all our expenses when we get some money from Clinton Essex Franklin Library System. And the rest is uh, donations and, and money received um, in memory of people. Okay, now they do have a drive. We do have a fundraising yeah, it's drive. In the fall. In the fall. Right? And any help at all would be appreciated, any. obviously, right? Don't have to be $25 or $15, a dollar or two, whatever you can give, right? They all and any time you come in that you want to donate. Uh, now, what about donating particular things? I think you told me the other day that this um, uh, dictionary stand was made and donated by George Cameron. Right. Right? A uh, very good woodworker here. His wife, Lucille, just sold her house in Champlain. She's going to move to Rouse's Point. But they were, he was very good to the library. That's a beautiful stand. I was looking in a book uh, of library things in the past couple of days, and I think that stand, uh, one of that type, would sell for like nearly $300. Yeah. I, I was amazed. I was amazed. Right? Now, what other type of things uh, can people donate or have people donated? Well, we have, um, like Mrs. Smith donates, time, um, modern maturity, 4K, our 
Oh, Adirondack and, and a couple others. Mrs. Uh, Dresser do donates Gourmet, which is a magazine. So some of them donate magazines. Other people bring in books that they want to get rid of, and hopefully we don't have them so we can replace them on our shelves. Okay, now you are, you're telling me, I didn't know this either, that if I have a subscription to a magazine, and if I were to throw away, which I never would, could throw away a magazine, <laughs> but if I did, or if you have any magazines out there that you want, like Sports Illustrated, I'm sure you're not going to keep it, and if you don't give it to me, give it to the library. They would be glad to have it. I see Country Living over there, Newsweek, Time, so right. forth. You don't have to give the subscription. Read it yourself and then bring it here the following day. When you get a book, to right? All right. We One take, way of getting it. Okay. Uh, what People else? People have donated boxes upon boxes of books, and I go through them, and any that I can use in the library, I take and process, and books that I have duplicates of, I take down to the Half Price Bookstore, where they do give me a lot of money for the books. Well, they don't give me the money, they give me a credit. Mm -hmm. And then I go through and I pick books out that people in the library have requested and it, I don't have to pay any anything for them so I basically get the books for free okay uh, in addition to books magazines uh, in the stand uh, what about uh, the picture now, that's, uh, let's cover that the pictures I see on the wall are not something the library bought it's, it's, it's they belong to the library system right. and I can borrow a, a picture right borrow a picture we have three left we should be getting more um, they are on loan from Clinton Essex Franklin Library mm -hmm. System, and you can take them out for six weeks and then renew them as long as you want. So I could put that in my living room over my over and my. When you got tired of it and you wanted to one? get rid of it, you could bring it back and, and take out another one. As a matter of fact, Nancy, if you remember, Dick Crichton <laughs> and I used to borrow them uh, and use them in our office at up at the customs. Oh, I remember those. And I used to always kid Dick because he was on the the board of the library and he would never bring them back. <laughs> and I told him he's going to lose. Talking about the library board, who is on your library board? Our board president is Marge Dresser. We have Doug Agor, Dr. Southwick. Janice Dawson, Bev Maynard, Jerry Rowe, and um, Grace Jerry. Okay, all local names that I'm sure people out there recognize. This is, uh, program is being, as you know, uh, broadcast uh, the Channel 21 area, right. the hometown cable, on uh, our Champlain new channels. All right, and we're and there are libraries, of course, in your own communities of Shazy, nice little library. There's one in Roses Point, and there's one in Moore. So we invite you to. Visit your library. You're a librarian and looking forward to seeing you, yes, right? You want How many people do you have that. We in, have in 910 your... cards out, but we don't have 910 people come to the library every two weeks. Uh, I'd say we, if we had 200 come every two weeks, we were doing quite a bit. I do get a lot of phone calls of asking for books. I've Ask the teachers if they would put, you know, send me a list of subjects that they were going to be teaching that I could find the books, put them on reserve so one person wouldn't get the book, and then hog it for the two weeks that they had. Uh, I've been getting some response, but not as much as I'd like, mm -hmm. and um, we've been just doing a whole bunch of things. Okay, what are your hours and days that you are open? We're open Monday from 2 to 5 and 5.30 to 8.30. Okay, that's Monday, right? 2 to 5, and then you take a break to, for lunch. For dinner. Okay, dinner, and then you... Uh, back from 5.30 until 8.30, 8, 8 right? Then Wednesday, we're open from 10 to 4. Okay, through the lunch period, 10 to 4, yes. And Friday, we're open from 11 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to noon. Okay. Now, that gives us four days. You can't be here all the time, but uh, this library is very comfortable. It's a beautiful library, very well kept, and we have about how many books would you say you have? We have about almost close to 9,000 now. 9,000 books, very good. And that's not counting all the paperbacks. We do have Harlequin Romance paperbacks. We have uh, nonfiction paperbacks, war stories. Um, we have westerns, and we have just general paperbacks. Okay. You know, like there are a lot of paperbacks that people have and don't know what to do with. Uh, you'd be glad to have I'll them, bring right? Bring them in, yeah. And you can either use them for trade or you can put them up here, right? Right. Uh, obviously, you want those with covers, not the ones with no front covers. Those well, are with the front covers, I've re made my own cover. You have made a cover. Well, very Come good. Uh, okay, now what services do you have other than books that I can borrow? I can borrow the pictures. Right. What else can I borrow? You can borrow VCR tapes. We don't have them in our library. We have to send form from Clinton Essex Franklin VCR library. tapes. Very interesting. You see that package over here? Calvin, let me just show you here. Right here. There are six in there that Bob Venn is going to bring home. <laughs> this is his second time. I got six last Friday because I was here two weeks ago uh, on another project looking for the old yearbooks from the school, and I just said, would you like to uh, be on Channel 21? And she said that it would be great for the library, and 
And she said, I love to be on TV, remember? <laughs> and she, I said, well, what, what kind of questions? I said, well, like, for instance, what do you have? And she told me, the third thing was VCR tapes. And I said, VCR tapes, I didn't know that. And I started to get them, all right? And there's about four to five hundred different selections. You aren't going to have all the current movies, but there are some uh, juvenile movies, some of the Walt Disney's, right. but there's National Geographic, there's travelogues, there's uh, history. Right, and there's history, there's um, pictures about Colorado, Portrait of America, right. Colorado, Maine. The, we do have um, The Color Purple, La Bamba, and they do have Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, uh, di most Disney, fl Disney right. flags. And they're, they're VHS in both cases, right? right? No beta. Oh, no beta. Okay, so you have the, and then you also have tapes, audio we tapes? We have audio tapes. It's called Talking Books. It's for uh, people who either are driving in cars and want to read a book. They listen to it. We uh, have to send to Plattsburgh again for that, but they uh, usually send them within a week, and they come in cassette tapes, and you just pop them in the cassette player, and, and you have your book. Okay, that, that brings me to the point of Plattsburgh. That's not from the Plattsburgh Library. No, this is the Clinton Essex Clinton, Franklin Library okay. System. Now, they uh, loan you anything they have that you can get, right? Right. They have over 100,000 books down okay. in the building. It's right next to the Plattsburgh Public Library. And it serves the 29 member libraries in the counties of Clinton, Essex, and Franklin. Okay. Now, I also just recently seen, or I picked it up here, where they, the, the Clinton, Essex, Franklin mm -hmm. Library will deliver it to homes. Did they go to the uh, senior citizens here in, in the community, to, right? They go to, well, they have uh, in the parking lot of the senior housing, they do have a bookmobile that mm -hmm. comes. It also goes to uh, Cedar Hedge, and they deliver books to those, the people there. Um, the, every other Wednesday is the day for the book delivery in the bookmobile up in, and it's usually, I think, from 12, 15 to, to quarter of one up in, uh, it's about a half hour stop, and they mm -hmm. stop at different uh, areas. And the, the older people who can't walk down here find it a, a benefit to get books. Okay. We, what, what else can you get from we this library? Can get, we have a, car, a catalog of 16 millimeter films that they rent out. Mm -hmm. That would be mostly oh, for organizations. We, organizations. Not too many people have a 16 millimeter camera well, at we home. We do have one that we you loan, out? loan out as long as they say that they will repair it if they damage it. Okay, so for instance, the senior citizens could have a movie downstairs if mm -hmm. they so desired. You could see their heads or, or anybody, anybody else, right? Yeah, anybody. The fire station yep. usually fire borrows station. it for Terrific. CPR. And yep. we also have large print books. We do have a, a large print book catalog that tells you all the books that they have done in Plattsburgh right. for um, people who are having difficulty. I'm reading. sure that people do not know these uh, are available in this library. I'm sure. And we do it's have a listing of book cassettes. That's the book that you can get and you listen can get to, right? And listen to. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you can get? No, I think we cover most of it. We okay. Do, well, we do have um, children's books on tape, too. We do have Dr. Seuss, and they okay. get a little book, and they get a tape that they can pop in the, the cassette player. Okay, you can, there's three tables here you can study at if you so desire, right. and you have encyclopedias. I saw the World yep, Book here the other day. What other kind of reference books do you have? Uh, uh, well, I mean, that's the area that I've been trying to, to build up. We've gotten a new World War II book. We've gotten okay. a universe book. Mm -hmm. um, there are... Our uh, Random House Encyclopedia, Collier's Encyclopedia, which are one giant book, and we try to, um, you know, fulfill any needs that we have there. Okay. I noticed the other day you had the at least some or half of the Time Life uh, home book series to how to do your plumbing and building an addition and storage right. and so forth. I borrowed four of those and browsed at them very quickly. My wife, Teresa, is a very avid reader, gets a lot of books here. My daughter, Sue, is a, is a reader. And my granddaughter, Rachel Belrose, is, a, is an avid reader. And we just saw Zeke Dagenhart leave here. Right. Joyce uh, Glode. Glode is a, it, carried out eight or ten books yeah. at a time. And there are other people. But do, do you find that you have as many grown-ups as the juveniles getting books? Our book selection usually is that, that uh, uh, we have more older books going out than the juveniles. But that changes during the summer when we have our summer reading program. That a lot more juvenile books go out than the um, the older adult fiction or nonfiction. Over the summer, we do have a reading program where the kids come to the library on a set day. Usually, it w last year it was Wednesday, and they see a, a video or a movie. We have a screen, and mm -hmm. we have our movie projector, which sometimes I <laughs> have fun playing with. And I uh, show them a movie, and then after we have uh, arts and crafts, and they do that. Okay, this is your card file back here, Nancy. How, how is that indexed? What can I Everything find? Everything is alphabetical. 
Uh, by name of the book? By, by author, by title of the book, and if it has any subject matter, like if uh, you had a book on diets. I, was, I have a new one called The, Under, the Underburners Diet. Mm -hmm. It would be under you for underburners. Right. It would be under Edelstein. Yes. It would be under her name, and then I've put it under diet and weight loss. Okay. So you have all different subjects that you can I, all in. those intermix all those indexes are they separate Every, no everything's mixed together it's okay. all alphabetical okay so there's only one set of indexes right right now this is your list of best sellers and right, new books that we have and the check marks mean that we have them you have them here right we have, we have purchased okay them. and if there's new books to be purchased you decide which ones i usually we get um, book reading book lists that have descriptions of the books and they let us know what what books are better than average and we try and purchase them plus if people come in and request books that they want to read a book like we had um, Jackie Kennedy book by Heyman uh, we had a couple people come in for that and when I had a few people request it then I said well gee it, there's a, a need for it so we purchased it so we do have that we're gonna get back to the board we just ran out of battery and changed battery and <laughs> we also changed positions we're behind home plate here <laughs> where all the action takes place we're the catcher <laughs> we're the catcher and I'm the umpire all right <laughs> So we're talking about the board, and what does the board tell you? You got so much money to spend for books, right. but you decide which books. They, uh, well, I show uh, show the board and tell them that there's a need in this area, and then they tell me to look for different books and that they can we can use in the library. They also control um, the repairs to the building, authorized repairs. Plus, I I bring up new ideas, and then they. You accept them or reject them as mm -hmm. they, they want. Like uh, I brought up an idea of having an Adirondack room where we would purchase books about the Adirondacks, about lo the towns around uh, Champlain. And so they decided that was a good idea. And then the debate was where to put it. So we've decided to eliminate our cloakroom in front over here. Right over there. We'll look at that and after. And, okay. and put shelves in and purchase um, books on the Adirondacks. We've got a good lead on different books, and so we're going to. And then Doug is on the village board, and he put in a notice into the, I think, of the water and sewage that anybody having information on the town of Champlain, if they were willing to donate it, to please send it to the, lab or to the village office. They did get a lot, but we're asking if they don't want to donate it, if they could let us copy it, because we do have a Xerox copier. Okay, now, you mentioned the town, and I think we're talking about the village, village. right? Mm -hmm. It's so easy to, when you talk about the town of Champlain, and he's from that town, we're, we're talking really, we mean the village in this right. case, and he is our village historian, Doug Agor, right. and he has these things, and he's going to keep his records of the history of the village of Champlain, whatever he has, in that little right. uh, cloakroom, which is right behind that uh, wall there, which we'll see in a few minutes. You also mentioned, very interesting here, really, the copying machine. Well, we make copies for anyone who wants them. They're 15 cents each on the days that we're open. Okay. Now, that does not have to be a library item they copy. They can bring in anything they want, make a copy. That's a service that this library has very much needed in the village of Champlain. And I, people have asked me, where are you going to get a copy made? And I think I sent them up to Tedford's at one time. You've got to go to the next building, go upstairs, and, uh, and there's very few places to get a copy made. They go to Rogers Point. Right here, 15 cents a copy. You can get 8 by 10 or 11 by 14. It will reduce and enlarge, right? right? So if you've got something to make it and you know the hours, again, it's Monday, to the 5, 5.30 to 8.30, Wednesday 10 to 4, Friday 11 to 4, and Saturday 9 to noon. Okay, and when you come in here, she has those uh, times on a little tiny slip of paper right over there on that wall. Pick one up so you'll remember. Right over here, you'll see that it are the library hours. And uh, pick up one of those, bring it home, and uh, put it where you can find it, and you'll know where Nancy is there. And Nancy also told me that she has a telephone answering, answering machine now. Yeah, the Northeast. Credit Union uh, donated a answering machine to the library, and now when anybody has, uh, a, like students, if they get a, a, a term paper or something assigned to them, they can call up the library, and if I'm not here and not open, they can leave a message on my answering machine, and I will find if I have a book. If not, I'll order it from Plattsburgh. Okay, they can also... Uh, renew, renew their book, books. renew Thank books on the, on the telephone, or you can ask for a book to be reserved right. and you'll get it off the answering service. Now, I don't like talking to machines, at least I don't mind this machine, but I don't like answering machines. But all you got to do is say, when, when the buzzer goes off or the, the ding or whatever you have, just say that this, my name is so-and-so, I want to reserve a book and sit, tell her what it is, or I want to renew my book. Give them your name. If you know your card number, all the better. Not a phone number. A phone number and she can get back to you, whatever. 
And it's right down here. It's right under the two good additions to our library. Very, very well needed. In right. here. Because it's not open every day, you can still get to the library. If I come here to return my book or my films, my VCRs, and you're not here, what do I do? Right behind their door, after, if, as you walk out on the uh, left-hand side, is a slot for book returns, and it drops into a bin, and um, you just return your book that way. I come, when I come in in the morning, I empty out the bin and, and check off your book. Okay, do you get many books that are lost? I have a few. The kids take them to the other school, to um, mm -hmm. Champlain's library, and I return books to them, and they return books to me. I've, over the three years, I've, I've lost maybe four or five books. Oh, that's, that's, that's negligible. It's hardly worth mentioning, right. really, but that's great. Now, if I, I'm renting these tapes, uh, they've got to be back here by next Wednesday, correct? This is not a two-week deal on my VCRs. Uh, on our average book, it's two weeks? Average book is two weeks, and we do allow uh, renewals of two times. So you can take the book out for six weeks, unless it's in demand. Unless it's one of these on this list, probably, unless that are in demand, right? Unless it's and people okay. really want it. And someone's it. waiting for it. Right. Okay. And you can renew that by phone, right. by coming in. Okay. Visit your library. I can't em emphasize enough what you can find in this library. Just come in and browse around, uh, which I love to do. Uh, I don't come up here an awful lot because I'm maybe it's too close to home, Nancy. <laughs> but I've, I've started in again, and I've, that'll be 12 tapes I've picked up. Uh, let's see, what else can we cover? And the other thing is we've gotten a, a computer. computer from Clinton Essex Franklin Library System. On our computer, we do all our catalog cards. We also order books from Plattsburgh. The general public is invited to use it. We only have um, print shop and um, write and spell a type write, write and spell type program that they can use. Um, it's sent by, to us by a grant from Clinton Essex Franklin. That's Library. an Apple. It's an Apple IIe. Okay. And we have just you know two different programs that they can use on. Okay. It. Now, when you uh, order through your computer, is that by modem? Yes. So you order it, it's immediately down there, correct? Yes, we the, it goes via phone and right down to the computer down at Clinton Essex Franklin. Okay. And, and the books are sent usually within the week. Which I find interesting. Now, let's get back to the VCR tapes. They only come in on Friday? They, well, uh, my book delivery is every Thursday, and I'm open Friday, so Fridays I come in and, and say, you know, okay. I need my books. And Wednesday is the day they do back. My, they do back. Okay. Can I renew those? No. Because they are... She put me in my place, didn't she? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody else may have them want them and, and they are only allowed for one week. You can always get it, the tape again if you want it. Yes. But somebody may want it for another program. And if I let it go out for two weeks, I've really messed up her schedule down in, in Plattsburgh. Okay, I understand that these uh, v VCR tapes are... Uh, derived from money donated by different groups? Uh, it's different grant money. Grant they, money that's been the given. The Clinton Essex Franklin Library System um, yeah. writes up grants and gets money from the federal or state governments, plus um, the correctional facilities I was gonna say, I saw do get grant money, and, and then the, mo the tapes are usually purchased and then put in Clinton Essex Franklin for everybody and then sent to wherever they're needed. Nancy, you seem very relaxed. Is this bothering you at all? <laughs> Great. Okay. We like that idea. Needlepoint. The last time I was here, we talked about needlepoint. This is, that's not needlepoint. That, yes, that is needlepoint. Needle okay, yep. let's talk about needlepoint. Tell me what you told me before. Well, what I'm hoping to do is, uh, I don't like the pictures that we have for long. <laughs> I just don't. That's like why she loans them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like children's uh, artwork and, and things that you can put in your kitchen, and, and they don't have any of those down at Clinton Essex Franklin. So what I thought would be good is if they, we had needlework of, for kids in kids' rooms and, and kitchens, and so people like Mrs. Conrad and, and down at, up at Senior Housing, she has said that she would bring down some artwork that's your needlepoint that she doesn't want anymore, and then uh, the library will pay to have it framed, and then we'll loan it out. And when you get tired of having it in your house, you can bring it back and pick something else out. So we're asking for donations of any needlepoint that you don't that you're sick and tired of and you want to get rid of. Okay, let's, let's re-emphasize that. Number one, if you want to make something for the library special and you want to do the time and show your, your handicraft and uh, how well you do it, you'll be very glad to get it. But you don't have to buy something, get it brand new. If you've got something lying around, I mentioned it to several people who said they, they're glad to know that they have some mm -hmm. and they're going to see about donating it. So if you've got some needlework that you're not using, and you'd like to see used by a lot of people, and uh, should be glad to put in the back of it that it was donated to the library by your name or loan right. to the library, loan, even right? loan. If you don't want to give it, just loan it. Uh, you know, it's very good to have. And also, 
Books can be donated in memory of somebody. Right. Explain if, that to us. If you have a loved one that dies and he's he or she is interested in a certain area like cooking or or um, woodworking or any subject area, you can come into the library and say, I want to donate a book in memory of the person and you want it in this price range and on this subject matter and I will purchase a book and then put a, a card in saying donated in the memory of buy and um, put it out on the shelf. Okay so that some people like flowers we don't all want to buy flowers and we don't want to <laughs> give any problems with our flower people in the area but there are also uh, books that can be donated that when my mother passed away four years ago a lady called and said she'd like to donate a book to the library in memory of my mother and I told her what subject my mother would be happy to have in the library, and, and I assume she did that. I'm not sure whether she did it here in the Shazy Library, but I know she did it. And this is a good way uh, as a memorial to that person and to yourself to show that you're interested in the library. Uh, what else can I cover? The labels? other The labels. labels. Yeah, talk about your labels. We have a label box. We're rivaling Campbell. the uh, Campbell Soup labels from the school. We are a part of the Campbell Soup label drive, and we earn the labels and um, uh, last year I purchased a cassette tape recorder uh, and two books with the labels that we received and so hopefully we'll receive more and we can purchase more books and, and app, uh, computer software. Okay now when I was here last week you read off the, the things other than Campbell's Soup that I could be giving you labels from that are owned by Campbell's and I don't remember even two of them. Swamps. However, <laughs> I would suggest that you make up a list well, of those. Right okay, <laughs> so when you come in, pick up a list of the labels that she's looking for. And you, instead of just throwing them away, just tear it off or cut it off your can. Bring it in here and uh, get something for the library. And uh, is that working out pretty well? Yeah, I've been getting quite a few. The, a lot of the people come in and drop off their, their labels in the label box, give me their books, and go look for other ones. So. Okay, this plant you see uh, on the way outside here. That Half, it leads all the way to the ceiling. I think you told me is 18 years 18 old? 18 years old. It was started right when the library was built, brought over, and it's sort of blossomed right into <laughs> a huge mountain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think uh, you mentioned some construction changes. This, oh, you see the fire hydrant over here on the uh, fire wall. That, win that door used to swing out, and you no, had a. That was a sliding door. Sliding door we before. We had to meet federal standards because we did have children meeting in here. The federal government and the state government had a whole bunch of changes and Northeast Clinton went for a grant and got our library changed to meet federal and state regulations. We needed a push type exit. We needed um, smoke detectors, which we now have. We have a fire alarm bell. Our furnace downstairs is totally enclosed and uh, we have a door at the foot of the stairs. Okay. Uh there's no air conditioning in this building. No. Uh, I'd like to just, if anyone out there feels that they'd like to do something for this library, and I don't know whether they can get a central system, which is something like $3,500, $3, and that's probably not going to take place. You're not going to get no $3,500 unless we've got some really interested people. But uh, I'm sure that if some people wanted to make some donation or uh, they could get a couple portable air conditioners that would that certainly help yeah. cut down the temperature in here in the summer, and they could be built into the walls around here. And if anybody has anything at all that they'd like to donate to the library, call Nancy and ask her what they can use. Uh, they certainly deserve it. And if you've got certain books you'd like to see here and they don't have the money, buy it yourself. Make a donation. Give a Christmas present to this library and to Nancy. <laughs> that smile deserves keep something. Me, Look keep at me busy. <laughs> keep her busy. Nancy is very active in the Shazy School system and in the village of Sh uh, Daisy, right. very much so. So we're going to look at the Adirondack room that's yet to be worked on over here to our left and maybe take a quick look at the facilities downstairs. We might mention that downstairs has never been finished off, correct? Right, but they did, they used to have classes down there, but it got too chilly, so they moved them up here. We're in this small cloakroom that's probably nine by eight, uh, just to the right when you first come into the library. And you see, these was, it was only used before for the cloakroom and a little bit of storage in its shelf. Nancy wants to put three shelves here where they can keep some of these uh, Adirondack and local history. <laughs> this is the back of a window display that you get from outside where they put special projects. You could have one, say, for the Boy Scouts in February. You could have one for uh, lilies. You could have one for Mayflowers. You could uh, have it there if you've got something you want to show. We're going to show some information in here about our uh, reunion for the uh, Champlain Central here in uh, May or June. This is the book drop that you see here. 
it was just out on the porch, you drop your book in, it drops into here, and Nancy files it the first day she comes in from work. It's very safe, it comes in, it drops into the container. And then she intends to, right over here on this corner, she wants to put a couple file cabinets. They want to get some wooden file cabinets. So if you have a wooden file cabinet that you no longer use, or you want to make a donation to one, this would be a great place to make a donation. This door is to the small bathroom that is used here in the library. And that's the the room that they're going to use. And they're going to leave the op middle open here, of course, to get to the restroom. Well, here's an unexpected surprise. As we just came out of the Adirondack room, one of the visitors here in our library, or he heard we're here, one or the other, we don't know which, Doug Agar. Doug, welcome. How you doing? And we're, we've been over here talking to Nancy for the last half hour and learning about your library. She told us who the board was, the history of the library, what she has in here. And the one thing we didn't get into too much is what does a library board do? We, she mentioned that you have your meetings and you tell her how much money she's got to spend and uh, you make the important decisions, but what else? What happens? How often do you meet? Well, we usually meet uh, probably about four times a year. And what we try to do basically is to provide a service to the community with books, uh, nonfiction, fiction, magazines where possible. Uh, we try to keep current on juvenile fiction, uh, books that are going to uh, interest people of all different ages. New fiction, nonfiction. As you say, we're trying to work on a collection for local history, Champlain Village, Adirondacks. Basically, that's, that's what we're here for. Okay, now I did take the liberty before mentioning what do you do here in the summer, there's no air conditioning, and she mentioned an air conditioning would be $3,500. If someone wanted to get together and raise $1,200 or $1,500, could you buy two portable air conditioners and install them in the wall? Would you, would you even uh, accept, a thing, would you even think about a thing like that? Oh, very definitely. I you, think okay. we would very definitely consider it. Yes. Consider it. That's what I mean to say. Now, you don't mean that you'd do it, but you would at least consider it because uh, if you can't afford 3500 you go with what, you, what is given to you right. sometimes. Um, okay, we, we know who's on the board. We know you're the village historian, correct? correct? While we're on the village historian, do you have much? Did you get a good reply from your request for local information? Initially, we got a, quite a few things, mostly... Uh, old books, old ledgers, uh, a few other things that I have, some which I haven't got yet that have been promised to us, and certainly uh, anything else that people would have that they would like to donate to. There you go. Tell the, them right there. Uh, the village. We're looking for any kind of historical documents, any kinds of uh, papers from stores, anything that has to do with the uh, Champlain history from the time of the... Uh, the inception of the village up to the present day, and these would be collected, uh, would be preserved, would be available for people to look at, uh, possibly, with use down in the future for students, for anyone who wants to come to the village to look at it. You're talking about pictures, old newspaper pictures, articles, newspaper right? articles, uh, books, uh, posters, almost almost anything. Okay, and then if you don't want to donate it. Uh, completely, you could loan it. Will you make a copy right. and could. then return the original to the That's person, correct. right? Because they're awfully hard to find some of these things. Yes, and I can understand where some people might not want to donate the original, but certainly if right. we could make a copy of the original and have the copy on hand, it would be very good. Well, Doug, an unexpected pleasure meeting you here and giving you this, just a short interview. Thank you very much. You. And we're going to go down and look at your basement. Do you want to tell us anything about the basement? I really don't know that much about okay. the basement. Okay, we'll go down and look at the basement. Okay, thank you. We're in Nancy's office now here. Uh, Calvin will pan it. Right in my hand, I'm holding a copy of the 1956 Aurora Borealis, the yearbook from the school, the last year that it was Champlain Central as we knew it. Because after the following year, they joined with Rogers Point for the new Champlain Central. And they're here back to the 1940s. I know I saw 1943, and I've been through these looking for our graduates, our teachers, and they're, they've been downstairs. And if you want to come in and look at some of our old yearbooks, just feel free to come in. They're not usually for loaning outside. They, you look at them here, all right? But then this, the rest of the, uh, of the uh, office, you'll see. Uh, over here are what these book covers? book covers. Book covers. And then some of the magazines that are uh, not the current issue. That's the 
we usually keep them in stock for five years and then we toss them. Five years. That's mm -hmm. 48 to 50 copies of any one. Right. Well, time. We have time. That, is our biggest yes. One. And then we've only started to save the. Um, we have Gourmet Victoria, PC Computing, National Geographic, okay. Entrepreneur, Popular Mechanics, Consumer Reports, Adirondack Down East, Top Line. Don't forget, if you've got some of those magazines, don't throw them to the dump. Don't make them more trouble for our landfill. Bring them here every week, every two weeks, and she'll put them here and make them available to the people. And we're seeing Sarah here. She's keeping the door uh, open for us right here. Sarah from Sh Z Central Rural School, CCRS. We're going downstairs. If you want to turn, Calvin, while it's running, we'll show you here that this is the, uh, the stairway, the back door for another exit in case of emergencies, and then the... The stairway that going down into the basement. Uh, we, we're in the basement now. We're going to give you a very quick pan. This is the doorway that comes down. It's an L-shaped stairway comes down with a new metal door, fireproof door, and then you see these poured cement basement walls, a full eight feet down here. And what are these two? Book racks. These are book racks that we store old uh, past issues of the North Countrymen, and we do have some Sesame uh, St. Mary's um, yearbooks. And this is where basically we store all our junk. <laughs> okay, and then uh, this is where they had some classes some time ago, years ago. There's some of the old chairs still here from the small uh, classes they held. And there's a lot of room down here. Calvin just said it's big enough to, to house a homeless family. And it is. It's, it's big. And uh, right now it's not being made use of the way that it could for two reasons. Number one, money, obviously. And uh, maybe you need more staff, too, because, you know, you don't want people running down here. If there were books here without right, someone, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't have not right, unattended. Yeah. These look like troughs, the look like troughs for feeding the pigs on the farm I used to have right well, here. Those are how they carried the books to the, uh, the new library. They picked, put stacks <laughs> out the books, and the hefty men would come and carry there them. There you are, and, and they're ready for the next move. Well, I hope we have another one. <laughs> All right. We're here for good. This is the enclosed room for the furnace. That's the furnace in there. It's got the oil tank. And we That's the state law and so forth. Got a metal door on that right. to so make... it blow my office instead Yes, of it, it wouldn't just blow everything <laughs> right. And you got more smoke detectors downstairs, right overhead here. And then the hot air heating system is cool down here. But uh, it's a, in the future, they hope to panel. At this time, they can't keep a lot of books down here because of the dampness, Because right? of the dampness, we have to add dehumidifiers if we store books down here. Uh, and it would cost quite a bit to keep it heated unless they were using it uh, right. regularly, you know? Right. Okay, well, that's just about it from down here. Uh, we're going to close off down here, Calvin, as well as any. Nancy, we want to thank you very much thank for you. being so cordial to us. Thank you for coming. And is there anything you want to cover that I have not covered? No, just come to the library, and if we, can't, we don't have the book here, we'll get it for you somehow. Okay, you've been very pleasant and very, and, and come and visit Nancy here in person. Uh, get a book, and if you, even if you don't want to get a book, come and talk to Nancy, and she'll <laughs> tell you more about herself, her family particularly, her family, yeah, <laughs> and her, uh, her job here and how much she loves books and library right. work. Right. Thank you very much. And from Hometown Cable on this Friday, the 23rd of February, and it's 2.05, and we've been on here longer than we planned, <laughs> we want to say goodbye. Bob then with the mic. Calvin Castine with the camera and saying, tune in every day to Hometown Cable. You'll love it. <laughs>